have you ever wondered how regulation of development occurs in animals? Have you ever wondered why you have fingers? Have you ever wondered why you have space between your legs and don't look like a mermaid? Have you ever wondered why a chicken has particular wing formations that many people in Western New York have come to love over the years? Well, it may not surprise you that it's all chemicals, right? Like any of the hormone regulation we've talked about before, the chemical signals are some of the most important for development, particularly when we look at the association and linking of cells and tissues and organs to organ systems. So what is it about these chemical signals that makes it so important for these different types of cells to get the information they need in the proper order? Because what we're going to see is these chemical signals are great, but if they're not delivered in the correct sequence, if they're not delivered to the correct cells, development doesn't occur properly. So what we need to look at is what is actually occurring. Well, we start out, remember, in animals with a set of cells known as stem cells. Don't confuse these with plants that we've talked a lot about but we need to look at stem cells as far as essentially a blank slate. These are cells that are not mature. These are cells that are yet to develop into anything. So they could be absolutely anything that the chemicals tell them to be. They are what we call undifferentiated. So differentiated mean or differentiation means that we're going to look at what cells will be when they grow up. The chemical signals that we're going to look at actually impact stem cells and help them to go through this differentiation process. One major group that we look at in this is morphogens. So what does morpho mean? to change. Okay, So if we're looking at something that changes, we are going to use particular chemical compounds to make those changes occur. Morphogens are a particular group of, of those chemicals that are going to help us make these changes. Where do these chemicals come from? Well, I have here gene product. What's a gene product? Well, first, you might need to go back and think about what's a gene, right? A gene is part of your DNA, part of your chromosome, that builds a particular protein. So a gene product is the production of a protein. All of this information that is going to regulate our development is all based in proteins. For morphogens, we're actually going to look at the development of a three-dimensional space. You're not flat. Most animals are not flat. So we've got to figure out a way to actually make you three-dimensional. This happens through a series of what we call transcription factors. So if we think back to a little bit of our cell biology and genetics, we go from DNA to RNA to make proteins. This is something known as the central dogma of genetics, um, but we'll talk about that more in the future. But when we go from DNA to RNA, this is actually called transcription. And then when we went from RNA to proteins, we call it translation. So what's actually going on with transcription factors? They're impacting this DNA to RNA process. The production of RNA, and particularly mRNA, leaves the nucleus of our cell and goes out into the cell to make proteins. If you regulate transcription, if you regulate increasing or decreasing the rate at which this happens, you increase or decrease the rate at which proteins are formed. We can also look at concentration. 
if we really increase transcription a lot, we're going to make significantly more proteins. In fruit flies, where most of this work is done, they're easy to work with, they're animals, they have same basic genetic layout that you do. Trust me, they do, even if they have wings and two giant eyes and live on your bananas, they still have very similar uh, layout to you as far as genetics. Almost all of the pioneering work has been done in fruit flies as far as genetics. So Drosophila is just the fancy scientific name for a fruit fly. And when we look at the idea of building this egg, changing it from simply a fertilized egg or that zygote into a developing animal, we're actually going to use in, in fruit flies, one of the first things we'll use is something called bicoid. This bicoid protein is actually going to develop the head. So in high concentrations of bicoid, you get a head. If you have low concentrations of bicoid, you get a tail. Well, why would that be? Well, you've got to remember that proteins diffuse through an organism, through cells, and they're going to be in highest concentration where they're produced. So if you have cells that are producing bicoid protein in high concentrations, that bicoid protein isn't going to just sit there, right? It's actually going to start out in that location and then diffuse through our cell. In this case, a very early um, several cell cycle of our Drosophila egg, this is going to be extremely early on in cell division. We would have some cell division at this point, uh, but not a lot. So we're just setting up a basic body plan. What we want to give this animal and you when we do this in you, you don't have bicoid, but you have a very similar uh, protein that makes this happen. We got, we're going to set up anterior and posterior. Critical to a body plan, right? We need to know which end is your head and which end is your butt. So when we look at this high concentration of bicoid protein, it's actually diffusing through and you see, they've tried to indicate to you here as far as color, that as the further back you go, the less and less and less bicoid you have, to the point where when you get to the other end, you have essentially an undetectable amount of bicoid protein. If it's undetectable, the bicoid protein that is regulating the cells to make head pieces, in its absence, it just makes no head pieces. So it's not that no bicoid would make a butt. It's that the absence of bicoid or no bicoid simply makes no head pieces. So the orientation of our fruit fly is then established very, very quickly. You also see they've set up dorsal and ventral here. That's actually regulated by other proteins. Um, we're focusing on the bicoid for now. One particular morphogen, so a morphogen is a group of, of developmental hormones. Uh, developmental, we'll call them compounds for now. Okay. It's Sonic Hedgehog. Some of you that may have played a little too much Sega, I suppose you may be getting too young for Sega. But if you've played Sega, you, know, you may be familiar with a character known as Sonic Hedgehog. Well, the experimenters and scientists that were working on developing an understanding of some of these morphogens actually named this one in particular Sonic Hedgehog. So what they look at is this development um, of actually limb buds. So what's a limb in a chick or a chicken? So a chicken limb is what? Well, it's no different than yours. It could be legs or it could be wings. You technically have a version of a wing, right? You have arms. But what we look at is specifically the development of digits in the wing. So be like your fingers or the very um, end point 
of, of a wing in a chicken. And I'll show you that in just a second. Um, but whereas the Sonic come in, they decided that this looks a whole like, lot like Sonic Hedgehog. You can decide. So in this development, Sonic is actually doing a whole lot here for us. Not only is it setting up anterior and posterior, but it's also setting up a three-dimensional plane. So remember we said these morphogens are critical at setting up a three-dimensional space. So we actually need anterior, posterior, dorsal, ventral. Proximal and distal may not be ones that you're completely familiar with yet. They have to be associated with a point. Um, anatomically, so distal from a particular point. So this chicken wing tip is distal to the chicken's elbow, per se, okay? Um, or proximal is closer to that elbow point, per se. We often refer proximal and distal on your body to your midline. So is it proximal or distal to your shoulder? Is it proximal or distal to your hip? Okay, don't let those confuse you. It just simply is setting up a more three-dimensional space. But what Sonic is going to focus on is actually this limb bud, okay? So like in plants, we actually develop buds per se, where high concentrations of these morphogens are going to cause further development, and in particular, the development of a limb. In the next session, we'll consider what actual regulation, overarching regulation, is responsible for all of this.